In the year 2039, the world is plunged into chaos as oxygen levels plummeted into uninhabitable levels and decimating the population. Darius and his family were among the lucky ones to survive. As an engineer and survivalist, he created an oxygen generator which sustains their bunker with livable conditions. They scavenge with what they can around them and even try to plant trees outside, but fail each time. But everything changed when Darius didn't return from an expedition north, leaving the two to fend for themselves. And to further complicate things, a group of strangers show up with shady intentions. How will Maya and Zora handle this dangerous situation? Five months after Darius went on one of his exploration trips and never returned, Zora radios him every day in the hope that he responds. Maya and Zora continue on with their lives, constantly monitoring the life support systems and running simulations in case of emergencies. But during one of their trips outside, they encounter a couple of strangers who begins knocking on their door, requesting to be let in. The Stragners look around and find clues that the place is operational. They quickly hide and think of a plan but their loud oxygen notification gave their positions away. The two strangers, Lucas and Tess are now on high alert upon realizing they've got company. Tess tries calling out to them but Lucas shouts a warning from the high ground but it was too late. Maya knocks down Tess and dashes towards their bunker. Lucas and Tess gives chase but gets locked out. Maya demanded to know who they are and what they're doing here. Tess tries placating them and explains that they mean them no harm. They're both from another shelter in Philadelphia where their oxygen generator is broken and they need to see Maya's working one to figure out what's wrong with theirs. Tess and Lucas traveled for three days and only has one week of reserve oxygen left. She also added that she knows Darius as they were colleagues back in their university days. And she needed to talk to him to figure out how to fix their oxygen generator. But Maya is skeptical since she knew everyone her husband worked with and he didn't mention any Tess. But Tess was quite assertive so Maya tells her that Darius still hasn't returned for five months. Tess is shocked to hear this but she still begs to be let in to see their generator as the fate of 25 people at the Philadelphia shelter hangs in the balance. Maya still doesn't trust them but Zora reasons that Tess knows stuff about them and sounds legit. And if Tess can replicate Darius' generator, then it can seriously help a lot of people. So they decide to give them both a chance. Maya comes out and finds Tess and Lucas some distance away. She instructs Tess to tie up Lucas, to which he's strongly opposed to. But they both need to comply if they want to get inside the shelter. Once Lucas is secured, it was Tess' turn to be tied up. Maya leads Tess towards the shelter first but they were interrupted by another man. She shoots him and Zora also helps out. But he kept on going and manages to tackle Zora into the airlock. Maya goes inside as well, leaving both Tess and Lucas tied up outside. Maya and Zora drags Micah into the shelter and wastes no time in tying him up and demanding answers. Tess confesses that Micah is a lookout and she didn't mention him since she also didn't trust Maya at the start. Micah explains that he thought Maya is taking Tess hostage that's why he came out but he means no harm. But the damage has been done and the trust lost. Now backed in the corner, Tess declared that she will break in the shelter no matter what. She frees Lucas and they both come up with a plan. Maya patches up Micah and Zora again tries to reason with Maya to trust them, but she got dismissed. A system alarm activates and they learn that Lucas is trying to drill through the door. Maya is slowly panicking but Zora thinks of an idea and puts equipment together. She manages to create an EMP pulse out of a flashlight and some microwave parts and disables the drill. Tess is frustrated but looks around and thinks of another way. She now disables the solar arrays which affected the system's carbon dioxide scrubbers. Maya creates a diversion by opening a garage door the next block over which draws Lucas's attention. He calls out Tess who reluctantly goes over. She tells him to go back to watching the front door since they'll run out of air soon, but they got attacked the moment they stepped out. Maya managed to sneak out and climb over the roof to fix the power. Yeah. 
But now, Maya needs to get back in the shelter through the front door. Tess realizes this and sends Lucas to flank around Maya while she grabs her attention. While Maya is distracted, Lucas takes her down and disarms her. Meanwhile, Micah loses his bonds and also manages to take down Zora and keep her hostage. With Maya hostage, Lucas and Tess demand to be let in. Micah tries to work out how to open the airlock but soon passes out and dies from his injuries leaving Zora helpless. Zora just barely managed to reach out Mika's headset to let Lucas know about it before they kill her mother. But there is another problem, they need a keycard along with the code to open the front door and the card is inside the shelter. Maya has an idea, they can use Darius' keycard, they just need to search for it at his last known location. Maya prepares a car they hid in moments like these and goes with Tess while Lucas remains behind as a lookout. On the way there, Maya admits that their oxygen generator can only effectively support two people that's why her husband is always going out on these expeditions. It gives them both more time to live and Zora more time to figure out how to upgrade the generator and solve the issue of capacity. They eventually arrive at their destination. Maya hurt her leg earlier and has to limp but she finds Darius' body and is stricken with grief. She searches his bag and finds a gun and the keycard. Tess goes to start the car but the battery dies. Maya aims the gun at Tess but Tess reasons out that she's the only one who can make it back to the shelter and decide to trust Maya. Maya lowers the gun and now fully trusting Tess, gives her the keycard and the door code. Tess promises to come back for Maya and sets out. She returns to the shelter and together with Lucas, enter the property. Zora is surprised to find the strangers enter without her mother and demands an explanation so Tess breathlessly explains everything. That they found Darius and the generator can only sustain two people that's why he left. By this time, Tess is so frustrated and exhausted that she can't focus. She's tied between going back to save Maya and figuring out how the oxygen generator works. But Lucas makes the decision for her. Tess begins opening up the generator while Zora continues to beg her to save Maya. Tess changes her mind again and will now go back for Maya but Lucas threatens to kill Zora if she doesn't continue. She goes back to opening the generator but soon learn that the machinery is more complicated than it looks. Lucas is confused and increasingly getting frustrated as to why she can't figure it out. Tess then finally admits that she never knew and met Darius before and that she learned about him from listening through the radio every time Zora reaches out to her dad to talk about random things. She really thought she could replicate the generator and even if she can, it can only support two people. Lucas realizes now what he needs to do. Zora is shocked yet Lucas is strangely calm. He explains that they only need each other to survive but Zora insists that she needs to go back for her mother so they can maintain the life support systems. But Lucas rejected the idea. Meanwhile, Maya is still alive and is waiting for the solar panels to fully charge the car battery. She notices small plants growing and realizes that her research is working. She furiously tries starting the car again. Lucas goes outside to dispose the bodies. Back inside, Zora asks him if he feels any remorse in abandoning the people back in Philadelphia but Lucas didn't care. A power alarm blares out and Zora explains that it could be the solar array cables degrading. Lucas uses Zora to fix it but he only gave her a little oxygen so she'll work faster. Zora goes up the roof but finds Maya waiting for her. Together they think of a plan. Zora fixes the power and demands to be let inside. Lucas, however, only watches as Zora slowly loses oxygen. He goes out once it's all quiet and finds Zora on the ground. But it's all part of their plan to retake their shelter. They hurry back inside but Lucas manages to catch up. Maya warns him that firing a gun will cause a massive explosion due to the buildup of hydrogen. As the air gets harder to breathe, Maya and Zora go to the airlock and leave Lucas locked inside. A desperate Lucas has now run out of ideas. 
Maya and Zora drive all the way out to Philadelphia in order to find the other shelter. But they both run out of air in front of the gates and pass out. Maya wakes up a short time later and finds the whole place bustling with people. She was greeted by the shelter leader where he says that Zora explained everything that's happened. She also fixed the oxygen generator. The two decide to stay and continuously work on their research and help survivors. And with that, our story is concluded. The very notion of an inhospitable planet is truly terrifying, not to mention how hostile we become to each other when facing such odds. Yet mankind continues to destroy the planet for more resources. But every day, more and more people are becoming aware and are contributing to healing the planet in their own little way. Hopefully, we won't be too late. Once again, thank you for staying until the end and if you enjoyed this, please drop us a like and subscribe. Take care.